Marty's Bar used to be the toast of Memphis, over on 101 Beale Street. <laughs> People have come from all over to sip on whiskey and listen to me and the boys play. We had fun, that's what I'm saying. Those were good times. Lasted me 40 years, this old gal. Except for a short period of time. Looks a lot better in the light. Well, you can imagine, never gave me a day's trouble. Except for one night when she almost damn well collapsed in my arms. <laughs> Probably Marty's fault too. He booked us 10 sets in a row, AM to PM, from Nashville all the way down to Memphis, and every two-bit town in between. <laughs> That's the way folks do it in Music City, he said. Country 101. I remember wanting to beat those words back where they came from. <laughs> Country 101. <laughs> like we was working from some rule book or something. You see, Marty was always cash, and I was always the king. Don't get me wrong, I liked cash. Liked him plenty, but the king was, well, he was the king. It was funny back then when we was working on his house, me and Marty. Back when it was just getting built up, we'd joke with each other. Marty'd say, I'll tell him. I'll say, Mrs. Presley, that hound dog was great, but it ain't no big river. <laughs> Marty was always cracking wise, but I knew he was impressed. We barely ever got to see him face to face, but we could always hear him in the background jiving, talking to his band or his gal or his mama. Just this one time when I caught him, and he wasn't working. That was great. Real great. Yeah. It was Marty who introduced us, if I recollect. Stood outside 101, smoking those honey tip cigarettes. She comes over and says, Marty, you talk like a train. The way you chug in and out of station all the time, like a freight train. I laughed, sure. Kind of took it from there, me and her. I got this postcard from Marty a couple of days back to tell me he was sick. Geez, I never figured he'd be one for getting sick. I knew he drank too much, smoked too much, but back then we all smoked and drank too much. I guess Marty just kept on going. He used to say it's the cowboy way. As if he was some sort of Billy Pickett or something. <laughs> Never even rode a horse. How are you going to be a cowboy if you don't know how to ride a horse? I ought to go visit him, I guess.
course I knew whose house it was that I was fixing. There was the king, so one day I saw him in the kitchen. He was in sweatpants and a football jersey, no rhinestone suit. But his shoes were cobalt blue and suede to boot. So I said, excuse me, Mr. Presley, can I say that my little boy will be born a week today? He said, son, Congratulations, and he felt his chain. He put a silver dollar in my pocket and shook my hand. Well, the day came, and the lump stuck in my throat. They cut her open. He weren't crying when he came out. That night I held her hand with my finger. I traced her scar. Tossed that dollar, big and silver, like a star. We tried and we tried and we tried and we tried again. Renee cried and she cried and she cried when the doctor explained we were together not much longer after that. Something broke. She got cut, and that was that. Sometimes I dream about Renee down by the river. Sometimes I dream about that Cadillac's humming motor. Sometimes I dream about the day that I met the king. Dreams are like a great big silver dollar that I can't stop tossing.